Florida State head coach Mike Norvell does two of the most critical aspects of play calling very well. The first and arguably most crucial challenge is developing a scheme that fits your personnel, and he showed his ability to do that by adapting to calling plays for Jordan Travis, a quarterback who's a phenomenal athlete with the ball in his hands, but still has some work to do when it comes to getting the ball out of his hands. But scheme goes far deeper than just running the ball with a scrambling quarterback and sitting back with a pocket passer. The plays must work together to exploit a defense. There has to be a rhyme to the reason, and when you zoom out on all of Norvell's play designs, they tend to fit together like a puzzle. To illustrate what I mean, I want to take a closer look at two of Norvell's most called plays of the 2020 season. Midline, and what I will refer to as the spread triple option. Norvell ran these two plays throughout the season, but I want to take a close look at how he ran them in FSU's final game of the season against Duke. This is for two reasons. One, Jordan Travis was healthy the whole game, and two, they were able to have some success up front, which helps illustrate my point. Here's the spread triple option out of what I'll call quads formation, because there's three receivers and one tight end all to the same side of the formation, which actually makes this tight end an ineligible receiver. They do inside zone blocking, meaning these linemen take one step play side and try to work their way upfield using double teams. And this tight end is going to let the defensive end go and arc block up to this outside linebacker. This unblocked defensive end is going to be the guy who the quarterback reads. If he stays inside to take the running back, then the quarterback takes it himself. If he lets the offense run inside zone without him as a presence, then the offense will take those odds all day. In this case, the defensive end took the running back and so Jordan Travis set his sights on the next read. This overhang defender who was originally lined up on the bubble has a choice. He can either help contain the quarterback or cover his man. He stayed inside, which gave FSU a three on two advantage on the outside. On neutral ground, a play like that might seem impossible to stop, but it isn't. Let's take a bird's eye view of the situation. Imagine you're the defensive coordinator and you know that the offense is running this play pre-snap. How would you stop it? The first thought might be to force the give to the running back. It sounds good to keep the ball out of Travis's hands, but you risk allowing this running back to get isolated against this corner, traditionally one of the worst tacklers out in space. So we should let the quarterback keep it. Plus, he has to make a pretty tough read and pass next. So at this point, there are two unblocked defenders that have a realistic shot at having an impact on their two potential ball carriers. Realistically, the only way to have all of your bases covered is have this single safety come over the top and this strong safety stay committed to his man outside. Congratulations, you've now stopped the triple option. The only problem is you had to sell out to have that happen. So how does Norvell take advantage of your selling out? Well, firstly, he can just call play action and take advantage of your safety vacating the center of the field as he does on this play, which is from a different series, but the point remains. But there's actually another option. He can call what's called midline. Midline is what I would call a constraint play for the spread triple. It takes advantage of the adjustments the defense has to make to stop the first play. Let's take a look at midline in action. FSU is in the same quads formation, and Duke's formation is virtually unchanged as well. This play features the same bubble action, which is just a decoy setup from the spread triple, and even the quarterback's mesh point looks the same. The key difference is that the read has moved inside. Instead of determining whether he should give or keep based on the defensive end, he instead reads this interior defensive lineman. Since he rides outside a bit with a running back, the quarterback keeps it himself and has an easy running lane. So let's take a look at the play on the blackboard. At first it looks, smells, and acts like triple. Since the read is this defensive lineman, they end up blocking this defensive end, who should be easier to block this time around. An old flexbone saying goes, hard to read, easy to block. Meaning that if this defender makes these reads hard by slow playing them, then that hesitation should make him a sitting duck when it comes time to block him. This outside linebacker is often frozen, expecting the arc block to come his way, and he's generally too far outside to make an impact anyways. So this leaves six blockers for six defenders in the box, which is a big win for the offense. Also, if your safety is following your adjustment for stopping triple, he should be well on his way to vacating his help responsibilities in the middle of the field. Now let's take a look at how this actually played out. Predictably, these outside linebackers run themselves out of the play and to their contained responsibilities. The safety actually does a good job staying home, but he just doesn't have a chance against Travis in space. This play is similar. The read defensive tackle almost makes a great play, 
and this safety stays home, but he can't make the play either. If I were Norvell, I would see that they don't respect the spread triple and go back outside. Another constraint play to triple was this one I found in the Notre Dame game. They're in quads again. The play action and bubble action temporarily draw the free safety away from the quarterback counter. FSU pulls a guard right here and look to have an easy path for a long touchdown. But watch how good defenses recover even when they're seemingly beat. This linebacker works over the top of a block and this free safety, who's going to be a top safety in the draft one day, recovers to limit FSU's gain. These are just a few of Norvell's many plays that he adapted for Jordan Travis. And the scary thing is, these were already in his playbook. He just opened up options to Travis that weren't available to other quarterbacks. As different field generals come and go from Norvell's system, you can be assured that he'll work to mold a scheme to his playmakers. But just as importantly, he'll build a playbook that works as a whole to take advantage of what defenses give him. Thanks for watching. If you liked this, please like and subscribe and check out more great content over at Tomahawk Nation.